Hi everyone, welcome to Soft School. I am Kate and today you are going to learn how to download and install the free version of Floor Generator plugin. We'll find out how to use it to create floorings made up of individual boards or tiles and then easily texture them using multi-texture. There are time codes below the video for your convenience. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video and join us on Patreon for even more valuable free Dismax contents. Link in the video description. Learn easily with Soft School. To start, you need to visit the developer's website cjsource.com and sign up. Then, on the main page, go to the Software tab, Floor Generator, and click on the free version Downloaded button. This is enough for now. In the free version, we have only the standard mode is available to us. It allows us to create regular parquet and tiles. The full version includes additional modes such as herringbone, chevron, basket weave, and hexagon. Unzip the downloaded file and find the DLM file corresponding to your 3 Max version. I have 2022. Next, open the folder this PC, Disk C, Program Files. Autodesk, 3 Max 2022, and looks for the plugins folder. Copy the file into this folder. Copy, continue, and you are done. Multitexture is downloaded and installed is exactly the same way as Floor Generator. An important detail: 3 Max must be closed during the plugin installation. Great. Now let's launch the program. So, suppose we need to create a floor covering in an interior. To do this, I activate the line tool in the top view and create the spline for the future floor with Snap 2.5D. Close the spline. Make sure it's in the desired plane. We must apply the floor generator to a flat surface for it to work correctly. This means it should be a plane or a spline, as in our example. If any of the points are in a different plane, 3 Max will most likely crash. Ok, now that we've created the plane, apply the floor generator to it. You'll find it in the modifier stack. Right away, the plugin generates floorboards. Let's see how we can customize them. The first, of course, is the length and width of the boards. I set the size to 700 by 100 mm. If you unlock this button, you'll be able to vary the parameter within a given range. For example, let's set the length range from 200 to 700. The lower the spread value, the fewer elements will be generated with the maximum length. Otherwise, the higher it's, the fewer boards with the minimum length. I'll disable this parameter and keep the boards the same size. The next parameter is grout. It's responsible for the distance between elements. Usually I set it to about 0.5 mm for wooden parquet and it gives a very natural looks and renders. Moving on to offset. It's the percentage of shift between elements relative to each other. It depends on the types of flooring and the design of the future interior. For parquet, it's usually around 30 or 50%. For tiles or porcelain tiles, it's zero. The next parameters are extrude and bevel. We'll stick with the default values here, and they suit our needs perfectly. A few other important parameters are located in the general tab. Scale, direction, and offset. Direction and offset are often useful in your work. For example, you've configured the flooring in one room, and now you simply copy the floor generator to apply it to another room's floor. But the layout there needs to be at a different angle. In this case, you can set the direction parameter to 90 degrees, and you are done. With the offset, you can adjust the layout of the elements to match the room's geometry ensuring that everything is even and aesthetically pleasing. 
In addition, the floor generator has an interesting tab called Variation per board. Here you can simulate all tilted boards or create various other decorative elements. To make it clearer, I'm increasing the distance between the boards. Here we can rotate the elements, give them offsets along the X and Y axis. And these parameters are limited by the distance between the boards, meaning we can only rotate or offset them only up to the stop. We can also set the tilt. So, if you use these parameters in a more nuanced way and set some small values here, you can create a very nice and realistic edit floor. Let's also set the grout to 2. I think it looks quite artistic. Ok, let's set grout back to 0.5, turn off the various parameters and see what else is interesting in the floor generator settings. You can customize the floor generator parameters once and save them as a preset. Then you can simply load it when you need it. This is a convenient way to quickly apply and reuse your favorite settings. So we've covered the standard floor pattern settings. If you purchase the full version, as I said at the beginning of the video, you'll have access to additional flooring layout options. In general, their settings are exactly the same as in the standard mode, with the exception of some individual geometry parameters. Well, let's get back to creating our standard classic parquet. Guys, join us on Patreon, because there is already a video waiting for you, where I talk about the most useful scripts and plugins for 3 Max. They'll really simplify and speed up your workflow. The link in the description. After setting up the geometry of the floor, let's start to creating the material. First, we need to prepare the textures. To work with multi-texture, we should use not just a single wood texture, but a set of textures divided into individual elements. Multi-texture will distribute these textures randomly on the geometry and will get a very realistic result. You can buy these textures on the CG Source website in the multi-texture section or download them for free on the chronaoriginal.com. Go to the Florent Studio section at the bottom of the page. Click on this icon and choose the flooring you want. Then click on the cut service to download it. Here you will need to specify the length and width of your floor. Enter conventionally 5 by 5 meters for and click download. Returning to 3 ds Max, open the material editor HotKeyM. Create a Corona Physical MTL and assign it to the floor. Add the multi texture map to the base color slot. Open Manage Textures and load the maps we just downloaded. Select them with Shift and press Enter. Now check that the textures are displayed correctly. If not, rotate them 90 degrees. Excellent! Let's start an interactive render and see the result. Wait a bit for the noise to clear. For more realism, let's adjust the roughness and set it to about 0.3. Now add maps and apply color correction. Remove the saturation and increase the contrast slightly. I think a value of 1.2 should be enough. I can already see how the map is working. Let's take a closer look. Great, everything looks good to me. 
Let's add the same map to the base bump slot. Reduce the bump strength to about 0.2. Finally, I'd like to adjust the wood tone a bit. Go back to the multi texture settings. Increase the gamma value to 1.5. Slightly lower the saturation and add a little random gamma, about 0.15. Now the planks have some unevenness in the saturation. I think this effect adds liveliness to the parquet. Sure, you can adjust the wood tone using color correction applied to the base color. But in my opinion, the random function in multi-texture is a very interesting tool, and in this situation, I prefer to edit the color using multi-texture settings. Now I see that the roughness map is a bit too intense. Let's reduce it. Go to the material settings, and in the bottom, in the base roughness box, set it to about 70%. Great, we got a very realistic and nice floor. Now let's quickly create tiles using the same principle. Let's create a plane for the future tile on the front view. On the geometry tab, select plane and use 2.5D snap to create a flat surface. Remove unnecessary edges. Position the plane on the top and then apply the floor generator to it. Go to the modifier list, type the first letter of its name on the keyboard for quick search, and select the plugin. By the way, within the same scene, Floor Generator remembers the last settings you used with it. Set the size 600 by 600 mm and clear the offset. In the general tab, Adjust the exit position to make the tile layout looks even. And now along the Y. Now let's proceed to customize the material. Open the material editor. Create a new Corona physical MTL. And decide it to the tiles. Add the multi texture map to the base color slot. And just like with the parquet, load the textures using manage textures. Let's see how it looks in the interactive render. I want to make the tiles semi matte and slightly rough. Let's set the roughness value to 0.4. Add the same map to the bump to add relief. To make the light wings concave instead of convex, Set the bump to a negative value and reduce it slightly to minus 0.5. Now it seems to me that the stone color is too blue, so I'm adding color correction. Attach it to the base color. Go to the advanced tab. Go to the Advanced tab and reduce the blues a bit. And maybe add a touch of red. Friends, that's all for now. Today we've created this lifelike coverings together and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave comments below this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to check out our Patreon link in the description for even more useful and interesting content. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.